name is Emmanuel Brunet-Jailly. I'm an associate professor in the School of Public Administration here at UVic. I'm also the director of the uh, European Studies Program. Um, I'm also uh, Jean Monnet Chair um, in um, Border and Region Policies. I, I basically study borders and cities. That's what I do. This is all the research that I've done. And I study borders and cities not because borders are really interesting or cities are really interesting, but I study borders and cities because I think these are the places where we can understand best um, the kind of impact government activities have on people. And um, I look at this basically from the perspective of citizens and, and people who live in these places. Um, and I'm really interested in uh, understanding why governments uh, make the policies that they make uh, and whether or not those policies actually are answering people's concerns. So I study cities, for instance, f to understand um, how the life of cities becomes what they are. And uh, uh, for instance, I have a big research project right now on the civic culture of cities. Civic culture of cities is a, is a, a big name or a big word basically to say what is the personality of cities, if we want to talk about personalities, right? And why are they different from one another? And is it a relationship or is it the result of what people do in those cities um, in their interaction with governments, in their interactions with non-government organizations? But at the core of all of this is how is government bringing all of this together that makes the city special? Um, so I've written a lot on Vancouver, for instance, and I've written on other Canadian cities such as Calgary, uh, Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg, Halifax, um, and I've compared basically their civic culture. Um, I've also um, asked questions from the perspective of, um, I guess, the world looking at cities, and I've, I'm finishing actually a book today. Uh, on, uh, on Vancouver, where I asked the question, is Vancouver a world city? But I, again, here I look at it from the perspective of Vancouver's, Vancouverites, people who live in Vancouver, and what they do that could make their city a world city, and whether or not they want to make their city a world city. Um, I look at borders for the same reason. I look at international borders because they are the, um, one of the most interesting, I think, uh, policies today. They allow us to understand, first of all, why is it that humans have borders? Why is it that we've organized space and we have made space a political entity uh, for the last 10,000 years? Why is it that we have walls everywhere? Why is it that you, know, you even fence your garden? So it's the idea of borders in this very broad context, trying to understand basically the relationship that we have with space, but also the relationship that we have with authority. Um, and I think interest, and you know, I think that looking at borders is very interesting because, especially in our era, uh, because it allows us to uh, understand our relationship with authority and security. And in our era, uh, security has become a very, very important aspect. Um, of policy making and of you know the idea of securitization of the world and every time you cross an op and uh, you go into an airport or you cross a, um, a, um, a border port you're going from Canada into the U.S. or or um, even um, you know walking through um, a gated community for instance you have these changes that are taking place. You have these issues of security, you have these issues of authority. And so what I'm interested in is the articulation. We call this in public policy, we call this governance. But it really is the articulation between what the citizens perceive and what people want in their communities and the way land is divided and space is organized and space is divided and closed and open and where they can go and so on and so forth. And I've published a number of books on this already, probably six uh, edited volumes basically and uh, a number of articles as well, but uh, my latest research is really looking at the question of understanding 
um, borders in the 21st century and trying to wrap up, you know, coming up with some broader explanation. So it's very ambitious um, and uh, I think it's very fascinating. What I think that is, you know, the most important aspect or what I think that most people should be concerned about is that basically I believe very strongly and, you know, it's a philosophical, ideological, I guess, view that I believe that government should be at the service of citizens and should be there to help communities be uh, whatever they can be and whatever they can uh, become. And at the same time, uh, to do this well, we need to understand our relationship with our government and institutions. And the complexity of government and institution today is basically, uh, you know, very, very um, uh, interesting, but also very, very complex. Most people have difficulties with that complexity. Yet, and I come back to borders and issue of security here, yet when we look at the very um, origins of government, what we have is the provision of a service, which is security. So the, you know, the number one feature of government is basically that we have government, and we, us, the people, the citizens, when we settled and when we organized ourselves in the very early cities, for instance, um, after the end of the Roman Empire, it was because we wanted security. And then it takes very different forms. Um, and so I think it's really interesting to look at it today in this different perspective.